Welcome back to Character Conversions, where I try to bring fictional characters to life in D&D. Today is a birthday gift to OG Star Wars, as I try to write, record, edit, and hopefully post this video in less than 24 hours. I build her favorite Star Wars character, the son of Skywalker, Luke Skywalker. For stats, we'll be using the standard array of the player's handbook, divided up as you see here. High intelligence is necessary for some class abilities and some later multi-classing. Dexterity is going to be our primary combat stat, relying on our speed and skill rather than raw power. Wisdom is obviously our dumb stat, as one could say trying to face Vader when we haven't completed our training was not very wise. For race, Luke Skywalker is clearly human. Variant human will increase our constitution and intelligence by 1 each to 14 and 16 respectively. Our skill of choice will be perception, I imagine you need good eyes to be a pilot, and for our feet we will grab magic initiate. We'll grab wizard spells, but nothing too flashy as we haven't really realized our abilities yet. So let's go with true strike for when we don't want to use our targeting computer, message for some telepathy, and mage armor so we can fight in basic rooms. For background, I've decided to go with acolyte. It's kind of a stretch because of Luke's upbringing, but I also think he really took Obi-Wan's lessons. This gives us proficiency with insight and religion as skills, our feature is shelter of the faithful, and we learn an additional two languages. Pick whatever languages work for your campaign, and Shelter of the Faithful probably isn't going to come up since you are the last Jedi in the galaxy. For a class, we'll be starting off with a fighter. This gives us a d10 hit die, proficiency with strength and constitution saves, proficiency with all forms of armor and shields, and all simple and martial weapons. For our skills, we will grab acrobatics and athletics. As a first level fighter, we gain a fighting style and second wind. For a fighting style, we will grab Great Weapon Fighting. This allows us to re-roll one or two when wielding a two-handed or versatile weapon with two hands. Next second win allows us to regain 1d10 plus our fighter level and hit points, once per short rest as a bonus action. Jedi can heal faster after all. Our second level gives us Action Surge, allowing us to take an additional action on our turn once per short or long rest. As a third level fighter, we will choose our martial archetype. We'll be going with what is widely accepted as the Jedi subclass, Psy Warrior. This grants us psionic power, giving us a number of psionic energy dice equal to two times our proficiency bonus that restore on a long rest. In addition, as a bonus action, we can restore a single psionic energy die once per short or long rest. Spending our psionic energy die allows us to use the following powers, protective field, psionic strike, and telekinetic movement. Protective field allows us to, as a reaction to being damaged or an ally being damaged within 30 feet, roll a psionic energy die and add our intelligence modifier, reducing the damage by the result. Psionic Strike allows us to once on each of our turns after hitting a target within 30 feet, expend a psionic die, and add the result, plus our intelligence modifier, to the damage. Telekinetic Movement allows us to, as an action, target a loose object that is large or smaller or a one wheeling creature other than ourselves within 30 feet and move it up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space. If the object is tiny, we can move it to or from our hand. Once we take this action, we can't do so again without a short or long rest or spending a psionic energy die. Fourth level in fighters, our first ability score improvement. We'll be dropping this into our dexterity, raising it to a 16. Fifth level fighter grants us extra attack. Now when we take the attack action, we can make two attacks instead of one. Now that we have a good basis for our martial ability as a Jedi, let's delve into the Force. As a space wizard, we gain three cantrips, six first level spells, alongside arcane recovery. For cantrips, light will allow us to sort of turn our weapon into a lightsaber. Blade Ward is to help represent some of our beginning training in what was likely Form 3 lightsaber combat, and Mage Hand is obviously limited telekinesis outside Psy Warrior. Our first first level spell will include Charm Person for Mind Tricks, False Life to help make up for our low wizard hit die, Shield for helping us block attacks with our blade, and Featherfall, Jump, and Long Strider to represent using the Force to augment our physical ability. At second level, we choose our Arcane Tradition. I thought of choosing Blade Singer, but instead decided on Divination. Luke was able to discern information such as Leia being his sister in the movies, and later in the novels he saw his nephew becoming a Sith Lord before it happened. Strong divination vibes there. This gives us Divination Savant, Portent, and an additional two first level spells. Divination Savant just makes it easier for us to ascribe divination spells into our spellbook. Portent is widely considered one of the best abilities in D&D, allowing you to pre-roll two d20s after a long rest, and then before your next long rest, you can basically replace any d20 roll of you or an opponent with one of those rolls. Nothing feels better than getting to bank a natural one and giving it to an opponent on an important save. For spells this level, we'll pick up Detect Magic and Expeditious Retreat. Detect Magic will be how we sense disturbances in the Force, I suppose, and Expeditious Retreat will continue our trend of physical augmentation. 
Third level in Wizard means we gain second level spells. We'll pick up Detect Thoughts and Hold Person. Detect Thoughts could be considered how Luke learned Leia was his sister, and I don't actually think Hold Person is something we have a parallel for, but it's a useful spell and we need some spells to target our enemies as well. Ninth level and our fourth level in Wizard means we gain our next ability score improvement, one cantrip, and two second level spells. We'll drop the plus two into our dexterity, raising it to an 18, and for the cantrip we'll pick up friends. Our two second level spells of choice will be Levitate and Mirror Image. I know some Jedi were able to levitate themselves, and Mirror Image could be useful to represent Jedi speed. Though Blur would be a better representation, Mirror Image doesn't require concentration, so we're going with that. Fifth level wizards gain third level spells. We'll grab Haste and Non-Detection. Haste for our Jedi speed and Non-Detection for when we don't want to be detected by other Force users. At 11th level, School of Divination gives us Expert Divination. This makes it so when we cast a Divination spell of 2nd level or higher, but no higher than 5th level, we regain a spell slot of a lower level. While this sounds great, the selection of Divination spells we might use is not extensive. For spells this level, we will grab Protection from Energy and Sending. Protection from Energy is probably something someone nearly electrocuted to death wants to know, and Sending is to be able to telepathically communicate further than our message allows. 7th level wizards gain two 4th level spells. We're going with Arcane Eye and Charm Monster. Arcane Eye is a divination spell, so fitting, and Charm Monster is to better our Jedi mind trick abilities. At 13th level and 8th level in wizard, we gain another ability score improvement and two more 4th level spells. We'll increase our dexterity, capping it off at 20, and for our spells we choose Locate Creature and Confusion. Locate Creature is us reaching out to the Force to find someone, and Confusion in a way is still our Jedi mind trick. 9th level wizards gain 5th level spells. We'll be going with Cold Monster and Telekinesis. Cold Monster, much like Cold Person, is just a good spell to have even if we don't have a parallel to represent it. Telekinesis should be obvious. 10th level divinationists gain the 3rd Eye, 1 cantrip and 2 5th level spells. The 3rd Eye allows us to, as an action, each short or long rest grant ourselves dark vision to 60 feet, ethereal sight allowing us to see into the ethereal plane out to 60 feet, greater comprehension to read any language, or see invisibility out to 10 feet. We've chosen most cantrips we need, so we'll pick up Mind Sliver. I'm not sure if Luke could attack someone mentally like this, but it at least fits into the requirement of not being too flashy. For 5th level spells, we'll grab Steel Wind Strike and Rary's Telepathic Bond. The Telepathic Bond could represent a Jedi Force Meld, and Steel Wind Strike is to represent our speed and skill with the blade. 16th level and 11th level in Wizard means we gain our first 6th level spells. We grab True Seeing and Mass Suggestion. True Seeing means we'll be able to see through the lies of the dark side, and Mass Suggestion will be the last improvement of the Jedi Mind trick. Alright, so 7th level and higher spells really stop feeling like the Force to me. At least to the extent I think we have for Saiyan was used by Luke Skywalker. So for that reason we'll jump back over to Fighter, granting us another ability score improvement of which we will drop into our intelligence now, raising it to an 18. As a 7th level Psy Warrior, we gain Telekinetic Adept. This grants us Psy Powered Leap and Telekinetic Thrust. Psy Powered Leap allows us to, as a bonus action, gain a flying speed equal to two times our walking speed until the end of our current turn. We can only do this once for short or long rest, unless we spend the Psionic Energy die to do so again. Telekinetic Thrust allows us to force a target to make a strength save when we deal damage with a Psionic Strike. If the target fails, we knock the target prone or move it up to 10 feet in any direction horizontally. 8th level fighter grants us our final ability score improvement. We'll drop this into our intelligence, capping it off at 20. 28th level, the capstone of our build will be indomitable, allowing us to re-roll a saving throw that we fail once per long rest, but we must use the new roll even if it is worse. End result sees us with 132 hit points, an AC of 18, 23 with shield. Our weapon of choice is likely a short sword unless we can manage to get our hands on a sunblade. So our likely damage average will be 8 on a hit, re-rolling 1s and 2s. With 2 attacks around we will average 16 damage, 32 if we action surge. We can add an average of 11 damage using our psionic strike ability. Our powers aren't showy, most of our spells involve empowering ourselves, and our divination spells are more for social and exploration encounters. We take a slow and steady approach in combat, using spells like Mirror Image and Shield to bolster our defenses, Haste to boost our AC and gain an extra attack, and Steel Wind Strike to take care of large groups. Our hold spells can be used for locking down particularly troublesome foes, and if we have a low portent roll we can guarantee that they fail to save against it. High portent rolls mean we can guarantee we make crucial saves or make important attacks. Or maybe we use it to make sure an enemy critically succeeds on a save to turn back to the light. Who knows? Thanks for watching. 
Please like, share, comment your opinions or suggestions for new builds. Be sure to check out OG Star Wars channel and wish her a happy birthday. I hope all your 20s are natural. See you next time.